Well, hello everyone. It is Wednesday again, and we want to welcome you to Welcome to the Table, our live stream with these beautiful ladies that uh, I get to have fun with every Wednesday. Uh, Jessica Rimmer, hello. Hello. Good to see you, Tracy. Good to see you. Happy birthday. I'll just tell the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hello, Maria Guy. Hello from Albuquerque. Hi. And hello, Amy Norton. Hello from rainy Nashville. Wow, it's coming down here. I hope it's not raining in Oklahoma for your birthday, Jessica. That would be a drag. It is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. She makes it sunny all, all day long. So um, if you're joining us from LinkedIn or from Facebook Live, thank you for joining us. And then for those of you joining from the giant platform, we're always glad to see you uh, here as well. So thanks for taking time out of your day to spend a little bit of it with us. Um, we've had a really good time the last four weeks. This is our fifth. And we usually start off with some fun little chatting time, but we've got a really cool guest today and we are going to try something new today. And so I don't want to take any of that time away. So we're going to skip all that. And so Amy, will you just start us off by just in case there are some people that are just coming on for the first time, let everybody know what we've been covering. Absolutely. So the last few weeks we have been talking about emotional agility and what that is. So as leaders, it's important for us in all circles of care and context to be able to show up and know ourselves and lead ourselves and be leaders worth following and becoming emotionally agile is a way that we can do that. And by agility, we mean having strength and momentum to be flexible and adaptable. And we started out talking about the power of self-awareness and really knowing ourselves well to be able to lead ourselves effectively. And we built onto that with knowing what to do with how we're feeling and actually taking time to understand the, the range of emotions, how we're actually feeling, being able to have a vocabulary for that. And last week we added on to that sum total of our knowledge with an understanding of when to, to behave in certain ways. How do we show up? So the art of, of action and a liberated emotional display are things we've been talking about. And we're summing this all up today with an experience. And I'm going to let Maria give it away and tell us what mm -hmm. we're we'll engaging in today. Absolutely. So in addition to all of the plates that the four of us spin, we do consulting. That happens to be one of the things that we do live. We work with individuals, we work with teams. And uh, so we thought it'd be great to take all of that and actually help someone with a live issue. Uh, so they get the four of us uh, chiming in. So Tracy, who is the brave volunteer who has agreed to uh, be live with us? Yes, this is the amazing Tracy Zerdin. I'm gonna bring her on really quickly. Tracy, hello. Hello. Yeah, Tracy is uh, also here in Oklahoma, just up the road in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And I love for you, Tracy, to tell us whatever you want about yourself. There's so much, um, but tell us about your family or your business or whatever you'd like to, to tell us about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies, for having me today. I appreciate it. Um, I um, am a wife. I am a mother of three. We joke and say that we have batches of children. I have a 22-year-old, an 18-year-old, and then we decided to start over, and now we have a three-year-old, all boys. Um, so our house is always full of energy and loudness and stinky clothes. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I am a co-founder of a technology company called Made Possible By, and we make giving easy for community-minded businesses and provide them a better way to share their stories of good. And I guess something unique about me maybe is I love my paddleboard. That's my escape. Mm -hmm. I am secretly an introvert. Uh, people don't believe that I'm an introvert, but I really am. And I call it my own little private island that I can get away. I'll go exercise on my board for a while, but I go find a little spot and I'll take a nap or I'll read a book or I have some of my best brainstorms out there. I always have a pen and paper in my waterproof bag and have a little bit of chocolate and enjoy some me time. Awesome. I love it. Good to get to know you. So yeah, you all check out Made Possible By. It's a very unique, wonderful company that's doing amazing things and they highlight amazing people doing amazing things. That's what one of the things I love about 
this company. So Maria, yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. You have more about I'm sorry. it. Sorry. I was just going to say one of the ways we highlight uh, cool things is uh, I also host a podcast called Conversations Around Good, where we highlight the good that businesses, organizations, or individuals are doing in their community. It's one of my favorite parts of my role is that I get to do that because I get to meet people around the world. We've had people from the UK, from Canada, from the Dominican Republic. It's just really fun to share stories of good, especially today. That's so awesome. Those good stories. I love that. I, I'm so excited to know about this. Mm -hmm. I agree. Go ahead, um, Maria. Tracy, would um, you please describe the issue that you would like some, some help with? Tell me what's going on and how do you want to be more emotionally agile? Yes, thank you. Um, my husband and I are very different. Like I said, we're co-founders. We work together with Made Possible By, and we are very different people. Uh, my husband is a, um, I have to always look at the notes. He is a pioneer creative, and I am a nurturer uh, connector, but I find it very difficult to be nurturing to him when we're working together. I am not emotionally agile in that department at all. Um, when I ask him uh, for D, he wants to walk me through A, B, and C before he gives me D, and all I want is D. I don't need to know about A, B, and C, but he's so brilliant. He, his mind is up here and he sees things that I could never see. And I want to show him respect. Um, I want to honor him and our team meetings when the other co-founders are there. Sometimes I'm a little impatient and tense and I, I don't want to treat him that way. I don't want to treat my team that way either. I want to appreciate our differences and be kind to him. Made possible wouldn't exist if it weren't for his brilliant mind. Um, so any advice, any recommendations you can give to help me gain some emotional intelligence, I would appreciate. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask Jessica to get us started. But beforehand, just in that description, know that it's very common for opposites to get married to each other. We are attracted. So uh, it doesn't mean we're doomed. It doesn't mean there's going to be it just means they're gonna, there is going to be more understanding of yourself and of the other person in order to make things work. And the other thing that I would say is familiarity with someone sometimes makes it the hardest to try because you're like, ah, what are they going to do? Leave, you know, they're <laughs> going to put up with me, you know? And so sometimes you don't, you know, that's where you kind of let loose and we, we kind of hold it together for other people that at work at the office. So sometimes both that familiarity, um, you know, something to be aware of and it's not uncommon to have opposites, but I would love uh, to have uh, Jessica get us going. Yeah. So, I mean, I, this will be interesting because I think probably all of our different consulting styles are different, right? So I always start with questions so that I can understand a full picture of the context. Voices help, right? I mean, even having that first and second combination, you're dealing with an introvert and an extrovert. You're dealing with a future voice and a present voice. And we know from the work that we do that that can present some dynamics. But I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about the team because one of the things i heard you talk about is the impact on the team so tell us a little bit more about that leadership team who's in the room when you guys are experiencing this tension yeah it's typically um, one of our other um, co-founders who is more like me um, and thankfully he's very gracious and he disables he's able to let things roll um, but the other two are also pioneers and so we kind of have two nurture connector type people and then the rest are the pioneer drive things forward so does the dynamic of kind of you know i'm asking for one thing but i get another thing does that happen from more than one person in the room like do you and the other nurturer kind of get on the page faster and then the pioneers kind of group together and think together how does that dynamic play out in the room oh absolutely i mean there's not ever any tension between anyone else and and I know that our co-founders have seen the tension between us because I've seen it. I can smell it. No, you can't smell it. But um, yeah, I mean, the the uh, the other nurturer, he and I just kind of look at each other because we know. We know what we know, you know, or we know what we're asking and everyone else is ideating and figure things out. And yeah. 
Got it. Well, luckily for you, Tracy, you kind of have some of these voices on the call with you. So I have a really strong pioneer voice. Amy and Maria both have strong nurture voice. Tracy has a strong pioneer voice. So I would love actually, Amy, for you to take uh, take the first pass at maybe pulling a little bit, or you might have something to push that direction, because I think we very well could replicate this same dynamic minus the spousal dynamic mm -hmm. in the meeting. For sure. And Tracy, just I think uh, in the foxhole with you, I have a pioneer husband. I'm a nurturer myself, so I can appreciate the colorful uh, heated fellowship that can happen. <laughs> we have. Maybe that would be the right way to say it. There's also so much opportunity for synergy, which is the exciting thing. So the understanding is obviously where we're headed. And I, so just to encourage you there, I get the frustration factor. And I think Jessica's on the right track. Absolutely thinking through the dynamic. And I think if we focus on you and your husband for a minute, that's where I would like to go with a couple questions. Um, what is your tendency around this topic? For me personally, on a, uh, something like this that could be difficult to unpack with your spouse because of all the reasons Maria named, how, how easy is it for you to have a big picture conversation with him about how things going a pulse check, if you will? Like I, I'm, sensing some you know frustration from you or i'm feeling some frustration how, how do those conversations typically go about the business yeah it's 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 interesting because i feel like when we have these big picture conversations he is we call it flying the plane he's flying the plane he's ideating he's figuring things out and i feel like we flew the plane with those exact same topics last time yeah. and I thought we landed the plane mm -hmm. well he's always flying the plane mm -hmm. and I just need some concrete I, my my nickname on the team is a steamroller because yeah. if you want something to get done you give it to me and I'll make it happen yeah. but I could also run over people in the process mm -hmm. but I, I just need a little more just give me some something that's concrete so I can move forward and do something otherwise we're just up here and I what do I do so my follow on question without hogging all of our time would be, are you specific and concrete with that feedback to him? Have you ever said, I feel like I can steamroll and I don't want to do that. At the same time, I feel frustrated that it's we're still flying the plane. Are you ever that concrete and direct? As a nurturer, our tendency might be to hint or to think we've communicated it thoroughly. So what's your reality there? Oh, yeah, I do not have a problem at all communicating that or telling him that. <laughs> How is that received generally? It's great. I mean, he's he is the best. He yeah. he is a way better man than I ever deserve. So he always tries to provide the information that I need, mm -hmm. but it's almost like he can't even get it out of his mouth. You know, he's trying, he's desperately trying to give me some specifics, some concrete answers, but mm -hmm. I have to, like I said, sometimes count in my head and just let him get to that point. Yeah, that could be his second voice creative struggling to communicate. He's got the idea in his mind, but I'm wondering if asking even more clarifying questions would help in those moments to help him get from A to B a little quicker. Yeah. Okay. Tracy, question for you. Um, What's it like for him when you do this? I, I sense you are frustrated with, I don't need to hear A, B, C, D, but does he have any frustration or is this, does he even notice this is happening to you? Well, he gets frustrated when I get frustrated. I, I, I shouldn't okay. say he gets frustrated. I think he, it hurts, if I hurt him when okay. I get frustrated with his communication style. Mm -hmm. um, I think he feels like I'm doubting him and that's not at all um, mm. the cause. I just want to get to D. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple of uh, tools that, that come to mind that maybe help us understand what's happening is the provisional plan promise tool and um, the build the bridge tool, mm -hmm. because there's a couple of things that you mentioned there. And if Tracy will pull up uh, provisional plan promise, this simple little tool, has done more to clarify where we are. You know, we've been talking about emotional agility and just kind of recognizing the emotion, understanding what it is that we're feeling, right? And then labeling, you know, you, you've kind of done that whole part, but here we have level of certainty 
and then three different stages. Provisional, we have a low level of certainty. I just don't even know what I'm thinking yet. Plan, things are getting a little bit clearer. We're going to do some research. We're going to figure it out. Promise is this is, I mean, I've booked tickets. I've spent money. This is where we're going. And so even just to identify and, rate and label what stage are we in, right? If we can all understand that we're in the provisional phase, then you can put your pencil down. He needs to talk. He just needs, I'm not going to take any notes. I'm just going to listen. I'm going to ask clarifying questions like Amy said, but it's because the understanding is that we all know we're in the provisional stage. But at one point we need to move into plan and then eventually into promise. So what I'm hearing you saying is you feel like we're already on plan and you take us back to provisional and you're flying the plane again. And so I think language is so important. If you can just identify what stage we're in at the meeting so that everyone knows, okay, provisional, that means everything's open. You know, we're, we're ideating, we can ask questions, we can throw information out there. Plan, it starts getting a little bit more serious. Let's narrow it down. That plane needs to start losing elevation, right? And coming down. And so that can that orientation can help us help have the, a productive conversation if we know what stage we're in. Mm -hmm. I hope that's that's helpful. And I'd love for Jessica or Amy or, or Tracy to add something to that. Well, I think the other tool that you mentioned, Maria, is the build the bridge tool. And I think that that kind of builds on the conversation. So Tracy, that that provisional plan promise tool is just really good for, for you and he, him or the whole group to go, this is where we are. Because I think that, that that is where some of the friction comes from. But then also the build the bridge tool, I think that moves us into... Um, you know, the, the pioneer voice, they're ready to just kind of jump the gap. So to use your language, like he wants to just keep flying the plane, like that's a beautiful valley, look at it, look at all the things we could do here. I'm ready to get to the other side. And the, the guardian, the nurturer voice, they actually want to build the bridge. And so if you guys can get to the point, and this would be like the, you know, to layer the tools, this would be the plan stage. So what are the things that we need to do to build the bridge from here to there? And then can we agree on those things and actually, you know, put them into into place and, and the language becomes really, really helpful. Hey, we're building this bridge and once we build it, we can make it better. But the kind of really big pillars of the things that we agree on, those things aren't going to change. Right. And so being clear on the decision points, you know, what are the, the main pieces of that bridge that need to happen? And can we agree on those so that, you know, I, so that the, the team can walk across? Because I, I can imagine that in, in your team, in your orientation to people, Tracy, you're actually concerned that we're wasting valuable time, that we're not maybe providing everything that people need in the organization in order to move forward. And so some of that, you know, swirling back or flying the plane around probably feels like uh, maybe you're not honoring the people that are involved in the process. What are your thoughts on those two tools that we've shared? Is there any, you know, kind of aha happening for you? No, definitely. I, I, I like both of those tools for sure, because I, like I said, and I, I don't want to waste people's time. I want to get stuff done. Um, but if I, I can label that and say, okay, we're still over here. Okay, I can put my pen down. I like that, Maria. Put my pen down. I don't have to take any action. I can just listen and let them Thank you. Yeah, great. I'd love to ask just a follow-on question here. That those are such good process steps to get the process right, understanding where we are and what do we need to do to build that bridge. In those moments, are you able to recognize how you're feeling and and label those emotions so that you can maybe in your head while you're counting to 10, it's a, I'm feeling frustrated. I'm going to count to 10 as a way to process that feeling so that you can return to a place of productivity. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty clear to, at identifying my feelings fairly easily. Um, it's just a matter of not opening my mouth during those processes. So yeah. <laughs> 
last time we talked about that signal, right? That flag that goes up when we feel that either frustration, annoyance, anger, sadness, whatever it is, that's our first indication to wait, pause. Let me analyze what's happening here. Let me put a, a label to this before I say something, before I uh, proceed. And so I think uh, recognizing the flag just went up and then resorting to what are my tools? One of the questions I like to ask uh, people is, what are the long-term consequences if you don't do something about this, right? If you don't rein this in. So I want you to play that out while you're still calm while you have room before you're in the situation, well, you mentioned hurting his feelings, straining the relationship. And as a nurturer, that might be the motivation that you need to say, wow, long-term, I do not want this for my marriage and I do not want this for the company. So it kind of gives you the, the motivation to say, circle back, pause, mm -hmm. not just because um, you are uh, being patronizing, but because you're seriously invested in a stronger relationship and it's worth it to you to pause, right, mm -hmm. to count. And so I think we can do things for different motivations and I think it matters. Mm -hmm. It matters whether we're being patronizing or with, no, I really care about this. And so I think just processing all of this while things are calm and you have space is really important. So when you are caught in the moment of the emotion, you don't get hijacked by the, you know, the, the emotion and you actually have time or the wherewithal to pause, mm -hmm. if you will. So I think the concept of patterns comes up in my mind too, Maria, is, you know, we can know ourselves to lead ourselves and that's all good and well until we need to actually interact with another person. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm controlling myself. I'm making good choices, but then sometimes we have patterns in our relationship. So reflecting back and going, I am seeing a pattern in some of our meetings where I think we've established all the essential pieces of the bridge, but then our very next meeting, it seems like we're rehashing. I'm wondering what your perspective is on those meetings. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Do you notice that? I am getting frustrated with someone that I love and I really mm -hmm. want to use a different pattern, but I actually need your help because it's our dynamic. It's not just me having tons of self-control and knowing how to manage me. It's also us knowing how to establish what progress looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jessica, would you go through the, the dynamic tool here of the five voices just to kind of show people what that looks like? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So uh, this tool is called the five voices dynamics tool. And Tracy, you may have seen this one before, but you know, interestingly, your your husband, and even if he wasn't your husband, this would be the dynamic that exists, right? Like we just, to Maria's point, we just have more familiarity with our spouse, especially, you know, when we're, we're doing any sort of joint venture. But that pioneer voice and the nurturer voice are naturally nemesis voices. That does not mean enemy. It means that we naturally have different starting points for how we make decisions and how we're processing information. So, you know, that that little dotted line is just demonstrating the distance between those two natural, let's say that it's not you and him, it's just a nurturer and a pioneer, right? Those two voices are gonna have some natural tension. The, the good news is that if nemesis voices can line up and figure out how to establish the right pattern of working, those two things, those two voice dynamics together make the most powerful combination. And it's often why we're attracted to our opposite. We're like, ooh, they have what I need, right? But then over time, that distance, that you know, difference produces tension. And so the nurturer, you know, they're processing time related to right now. What are the things we need to do right now? Not way out in the future. Right now, these this is the meeting we're in. We're not down 10 years down the road. And they're going, how is this moment and how is this decision going to affect people and values? The pioneer is processing all of life. And often they can struggle. They'll miss the moment. Right. They're processing all of life in the future and they're going, what's the most logical thing we can do here? What's the, right. And so that logic versus people can produce a stretching point in a relationship. And then that present versus future can produce a tension point. And then you've actually got both of those tension points in the relationship. 
So you kind of laughed a little bit, Tracy. Uh, so maybe that resonates with you. What are you noticing from that tool? Oh, just the, I can see us being a superhero team. You know, I, I, well, clearly we've been married for quite a while. So I've seen those moments um, when we can do that. But I've also seen where we just don't even see, not only are we not on the same page, we're not in the same book. So, you know, it's, Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the tools. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think this is a great conversation to have, not in the heat of the moment, right? It's before. And I always encourage people when you're going to talk, especially to someone else about a situation that you find frustrating or where you find like, I am not, um, showing up in the best way, or I'm, this makes me angry or whatever is to lead with humility lead with humility, right? Say, I am learning this about myself. Mm -hmm. I think I am making you feel bad. I feel like I am, you know, hurting your feelings or whatever, but I am so frustrated. And let me tell you why. But I, I want to know what can I do to make this dynamic better? But when you lead with humility of this is what I'm learning about myself, I don't like it necessarily because I think it puts you in a bad spot. And because I love you, I want to, you know, have this conversation. And you might get a perspective that you haven't even thought about that he is coming to you. I remember talking to a couple, pioneering, nurture, husband, wife, and he came in, he says, the problem is she doesn't trust me. That's it, that's the problem, she doesn't trust. Yes. So once we unpacked everything, that wasn't the problem at all. Mm -hmm. She needed details, she needed information. She was scared, she was unsure. She's like, I don't, and he was on an adventure. And she's like, I don't know that we should be going on this, and, right? So, it, so we got a totally different perspective when we actually unpack. So sometimes we conclude that something has happened or this is the reason why we're having this conflict. And you probably have half of the answer, but uh, I always say lead with humility because then that person will see, okay, you're coming with, with a, um, um, an openness. Mm -hmm. right to to resolve versus you need to stop doing you know you you need to land that plane already you know i just <laughs> yeah because that that can put people on the defensive but you know you guys have been married a long time i can't underscore the power of uh respect and trust mm -hmm. that allows us to have conversations that are really productive so if that it already exists in the relationship this is a conversation that you absolutely can have and it will be productive. That's so true. And that uh, takes us to a comment that we have coming in, which I really love. And I had noticed it myself as well. Caroline says, I noticed that when you, your conversation started, Tracy said that she wants to honor and respect her husband. Wow. That's amazing. I need to have that kind of posture toward my husband too. Love that, Tracy. Yes. Not always easy, especially when, you know, you, we think so differently. And then I, mm -hmm. I love what you just said, Maria, about leading with humility, because when, when we're in that team meeting, I'm very often thinking I'm right, not necessarily right or wrong, but I don't want to waste everybody else's time, too. But they're not thinking mm -hmm. that they're not thinking that he's wasting the time. I'm thinking that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm disrespecting him and communicating that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, and mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Mm. Well, and Tracy, I think the thing that I keep thinking about as I'm listening to this conversation and, and just grateful for everybody's good points of view here is uh, we all have a need, right? Like, and I try to go into the discovery mode, like what is it that the other person needs in this conversation? Uh, you know, because I probably can't figure that out by just thinking on my own. I probably need to ask them. You know, do, do they need, do you need more support? Do you need more space? Like, you know, in that last conversation where I thought we settled this, maybe you had a different perspective on it. What is it that you need in order to be able to move forward? Mm -hmm. And the, I think about that, like gas in a car, right? You can't put diesel in and, you know, regular unleaded. And so we all have different needs. And so there's something about the vision that I think he might be needing and he doesn't maybe doesn't isn't aware of what that need is and, and you can pull it from him and you know him so well so you can probably provide some of that as well mm -hmm. that's great here's a need question that has just come in this is a good one meredith says my husband is a guardian and he doesn't let me dream i in i think i end up crying and pouting when we have conversations how can i show him what i need mm -hmm. i can relate meredith that um i, I know my husband has never 
not wanted me to dream, but his impatience with my time that it might take to share what I'm thinking and figure out what it really means could be frustrating. So I think we have to get good at saying what we need. And in that place of humility and respect, you may not know that this is a need that I have, but it really would make a difference if I could have some space to share this. And I, I think that's Jessica's hitting on something. We're all hitting on some important things. We, if we posture from a place of humility and if we expect the best and we are deliberate in sharing the things that we need, I think anything is possible. Yeah, I'll have to share a little bit about uh, the fear that us guardians have when you guys start dreaming. It, it feels like we're gonna do everything you're dreaming about. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a tremendous amount of time and money and effort. And we already have these plates spinning and I haven't even closed, you know, the book on this particular project or whatever. And it feels like if I entertain your dream, I am endorsing it, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. not what you guys need. Right. I once I learned that, oh, my goodness, you just need space. And we're not actually going to do half of those things. Then yes, dream them away. But I, but the guardian interprets all of that as stamp of approval. Stamp of approval. Yes, we can do that too. We can do that. And wrong. So if you can let your husband know, I don't want to do half of the things that I'm talking about. I just need a place to to have these dreams. So if you can just be that safe place, don't feel like we're going to have to do you know half of them. So I hope that's helpful because in the, the guardian, that, that's that's a huge fear for us. You know, it's just like, I got to cut this. I got to nip this in the bud before this nonsense. <laughs> you know, it's, it's out of control. And, uh, and it's just not not what's really happening. Oh, that's so good, Maria. I can second that as a guardian. You, you're spot on. Um, that's great. Well, we are unfortunately out of time. Uh, we could have gone a long, 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 much longer than this. But um, Tracy, I would love for you to have the first word if you want to tell us a, an aha moment or just a, I don't know, that wasn't helpful at all. <laughs> you can say whatever. I want to give you the last word. No, I've been taking notes the whole time. So I love the asking clarifying questions and, and defining those three phases, the provisional, the plan, and the promise that I can say, where are we? Where are we in this conversation? And be able to pin some things down. And then building the bridge, because I... I probably build really ineffective bridges because I'm just building them so fast. So I need to slow down and let the team get there and build an effective bridge. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate your help. Oh, well, thank you for being vulnerable. And um, I know your marriage I know your marriage up front. And so I know that this is a <laughs> this is a, a way to respect your husband is by saying, how can we get better? And I love that about you and in your marriage. So so for all of you who have been watching, as you can see, Jessica, Maria and Amy are expert at what they do. And so if you're thinking I need a little bit of a Jessica or Maria or Amy in my life or I could use some consulting either with yourself individually or maybe you and your spouse or maybe your entire company or a team these ladies are here for you. And so I just want to remind you, if you go to giant.tv slash, and then you either put Maria's name, Jessica's name, or Amy's name, you can get a free account on our giant TV platform, which has amazing content so much. I mean, you'll be able to see that tool that we just had. We just talked about the provisional plan promise. You'll be able to see the build your bridge tool and lots of other things in there as well that will help your marriage, yourself, your relationship with your children, your coworker relationships, all of that. And so I encourage you to do that. That will connect you with one of these ladies. So if you ever do need uh, any of their consulting, you'll be able to be connected with them. And if, if you can't find them there, just shout out to me and I will make sure that you get in contact with them. So once again, Tracy, thank you so much for your time. Thanks everybody for joining us in the series. We will take a, a break now from series for a while. These ladies have lots of clients and very busy schedules. So we don't do ongoing uh, live streams with them because they're just hard to catch. I'll just be honest with you. So we'll take a bit of a break and then hopefully we'll be back maybe uh, later in the summer or maybe even in the fall. So thanks you all. And just so you know, this live stream will actually be turned into a series. It's already on the platform. So you can go check that out. It's called The Art of Emotional Agility. So you can watch it uh, back to back if you'd like there. So once again, Jessica, Maria, Amy, Tracy Zerden, thank you all so much. And thanks everybody for watching. Thank you.